Hey, we are here today, everybody. We are here on a hangout with Claudio, Davy G, JV G Amitia, and Santos Bonacci. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. Claudio. Santos, are you there? Santos is there. <laughs> I know he's there. Yeah, hi, Good evening, yeah. everyone. Hello, thank you. Good evening. What, what? Santos? We can't hear Santos now. Santos, I know you're saying stuff, but we can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Whew. Dang, I said hello three times. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so we're here today because um, you were interested in listening to some of what Claudio had to say about this alignment that happened, his version of it. So, Claudio. Yeah. Oh, For sorry. Sure. Thank you, Santos. Go on. Thank Claudio. you. Oh, I think Santos is on a slight little bit of a time delay to us. I don't know about Claudio, but anyway, carry on, Claudio. Yes, so I'm going to unmute mine and then wait a few seconds because I think that's what's happening. Can you, did you hear all yeah, that? You're all, yeah, you're all right. I'm not sure if Santos is just about a second right. or so behind us. First of all, I do have to preface that I've studied a lot of Santos work for about four or five years. So um, a lot of what I'm about to say is a lot of things that 90% of it I learned from Santos and then went on uh, my merry way to see what I can find to help out the team. Um, for one, for Santos, I never would have found Ken Wheeler. I wouldn't learn about his uh, magnetism, his physics, and his metaphysics, uh, of which a lot I, I learned from Santos as well. And then uh, Parallel Path went on with uh, Ken Wheeler. So I want to thank you very much, brother. You're a very wise man, and uh, I've gained a lot of knowledge from you. Wow. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Right. So with that, uh, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's most important with this whole alignment of what's happening is uh, what NASA calls Eris. They should have called it Persephone, um, but because that was taken, they decided to name her Eris. And with all the research that I'm doing, Eris is... If I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up a little screen here, this is to help everybody follow along. But uh, it's very quite intriguing when you see what, uh, <clears throat> what she has to offer and what she has for us to learn. And let me show my screen here. We can't hear you, though, Claudio. Oh, here we go with that again, eh? Oh, there you're back. There you're there. I thought you'd gone. Um, that's it. Right, your screen's there. Are you going to see my screen? Yeah, there. Is it on the whole screen or just in the lower right corner? No, it's there. It's fine. It's all fine. Okay. So, right, so if I go look at that, you won't be able to see me. Here, I'll try to do this. All right. Um, one moment. Okay, so, in, and I've actually had a, an epiphany with Eris, which is all these different ladies. And I, I'm, I've been getting, Santos, I've been getting called outside by the luminaries. Different animals will be out in the backyard and uh, they, they get, grab my attention. Most of the time is when the moon is there. And then I had several, the first time, what I was, why I found you was uh, the moon was there, the sky got cleared and then one cloud at a time went by showing me signs of the zodiac like it's bizarre so that's when i i ended up researching and find finding santos bonacci um <clears throat> i know i need to follow astrology and follow the stars and how important they are and then i actually did have eris if you look at the uh the image on the left hand side um upper left hand side in the gray and, and white that that sort of a figure was in clouds I said my, I said my uh, intentions, and I went inside, and I've got my app out, and that luminary heiress was in that location. So she's showing herself. And then doing the research, heiress is really Mayat. It's Mechtecowatl. It's the Madonna. It's La Befana. It's the white buffalo calf woman, and it's Isis. And she carries the Ankh. And that Ankh is a symbol of Venus and is a symbol of Eris. 
And so she comes around every 560 roughly years. Um, I've got so much data that I found on, on her being very instrumental in coming into people's lives. One of them is, it's really funny, is all of a sudden I get a, an out of the blue call from an Italian club in Windsor and wanting me to get on the board. I ended up getting on the board and I end up partaking and helping out with just, just the function of uh, the mass for La, Donna, La Madonna di Canetto. And that too is another story where uh, the Virgin Mary, whatever you want to call her, Madonna, heiress Persephone, showed up to a shepherdess. And there's all kinds of stories that follow that. <clears throat> so it's, it's really quite invigorating how everything's unfolding and how she's getting everybody's attention. So she travels around the Zodiac every 560 roughly years. So I'm going to share a different screen now, Karen. Okay, we're waiting. Yeah. Can you see that? That's it. That's perfect. Okay, so I know this is really, really busy, but I just wanted to show some of the things that are in here. And if you see, you start doing some math, you can see that Eris travels around 1 60th of the clock. And what this is, some people who've seen my other videos know that this is the 60 repeating numbers that lays out the swastika, the cross, and also lays out the 369, which lands on the 18 degrees, which the Great Pyramid has been, has, has uh, you know, made, made things timeless by putting offsetting the Great Pyramids by 18 degrees. And that lines up exactly with the 369. And if you start going back with Eris and where she was, because right now she's in Pisces and she's already came in and done a visit into the, in Aries. So she's did a little jaunt earlier on. I can get into some dates later. And she's gone back retrograde and she's come back again. So before I go on further, I want to show you that she was there during Tesla's time. You take her in 9.3 roughly years for 1 60th of that clock. You can see that Tesla was born between 1856 and died, sorry, was born in 1856 and died in 1943. And that would have been exactly 1907 when this lines up on the 369. So hence Tesla and his 369, it's right here. It's in there. So the map is there. Does anybody have any questions? Am I going at a, am I explaining myself? I think he means you, Santo. Okay. Yep, yep, um, yep. Good so far, <laughs> yes. So, so I just wanted to show that she does make a presence, and you can see, and this, this circle of 60, to which I did not discover, but all, a lot of the things on here I did find from other people, and I throw it on here. And this is the universal map. And it's so tied with astrology, Santo, so I thought it was very important that you see this, because it's all tied. And you can, you can see how I put the alphabet. I know you do a, a version of putting the alphabet and all the different glyphs around the zodiac. These ones here fit really, 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 really amazingly. A is the alpha, where the, one, where the 1011 is. Can you hear me, Karen? Yep, I'm listening. Did you hear that? Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm listening. We can see it loud and clear. It's big on the screen okay, as well. So, okay, I'm just making sure I, that I, I'm, I didn't. Okay, so Alpha 1011, there's only four places where these numbers do that. These are the gates, all right? These are the four gates. So Alpha's there. Omega, oops, sorry. Omega's on the other side, 9099, right? So there's the O, Libra, 7077, there's the G, it's the seventh letter, right? So this is the light you can see. And then the 3033 is a light you cannot see at the U. So now when you start going all around these, you see the, the M and N is in the middle, and there's your Mona for your Mona Lisa. So then you start going around, you got the Romans, you got the Masons, you got woman, 
Monad, Omnia. So all these different groups, it makes a lot of sense that they were following the MNOA, the 13th in the middle, right? So there's two sides, two 13s. So I'm, I'm gonna, I just wanted to briefly touch over that. There's so much in here that you can, that I can get into that I could take up the whole, the whole chat, but what's most important is I want to talk about what is Persephone, the Madonna, because she's coming back. The, interestingly enough, um, Kathy's niece had her, her, her rental property burn and, uh, her husband is, uh, um, Canadian original Indian. And he told me about the white, um, I'm going to, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go back to the other screen now. So he told me about the white Buffalo calf woman and all these people talk about this energy, this spirit, this Madonna comes back every 500 something years. We seem to forget about her again. She's in, she's in Pisces. And now here's where this, here's where the Santa Claus comes in. And I know, and this is one of the things I learned from of many that I learned from Santos, the Santa means saint. And I was in a church just recently for my ex-father-in-law's funeral and a little girl, my, my daughter's stepdaughter looks at me and says, Oh, look, Santa. There was a, a saint on the St. Angela church, uh, a stained glass window that had the word Santa on it. And then it just got me thinking, right? I just, that, and I started thinking about Santa Claus and Santa Claustrum. So, Santa, the saint, Madonna, is coming into the claustrum. She's coming. She's coming to see if we've been naughty or nice. So she keeps taking a peek, and she comes into Aries. She goes back retrograde, and she's coming back into Aries again in May. And she takes a little bit longer each time as she does her little direct versus uh, retrograde. So... The things that are lining up with, with Eris are just incredible. Um, and I've been using this glyph, this energy for weather prediction. And it doesn't only work with in that external weather, but it's internal weather. Last year, I was able to predict when the major hurricanes happened, or let me say major weather, because I'm not able to decipher which ones are exactly, um, and I'm getting, I'm narrowing it down though. I'm narrowing down which ones were. So I, I was like 90 to 95% accurate on when major weather was going to hit. And then including when I came to, in the first week of January, when I came to Aruba three weeks prior, I said, there's gonna be some very different weather in Aruba on, I believe it was the 10th or the 11th. And lo and behold, when we were there with people that it was their timeshare, they've been coming for many, many years. And the guy's going, well, no, I think I've seen this kind of weather before. And it was so windy and so dark and so uh, rainy. And so it just, it, you know, you could see something was different. And his wife said, not a chance. This has never been like this before. So. She is showing her true colors. She's showing her wrath. She's going to be delivering her karma. I see it. I feel it. And then on that, then we had the, uh, a bunch of different uh, things happen, right? We had the three, the three, um, uh, let me get, I'll get into that. Uh, where are we? We had the, let me go here. I'm going to show you. So, this here are the players on what happened after the January 12th. It's black. So on January the 12th, when it's this, black. I'm sorry, I guess I'm jumping. I should have went over to here. Um, Claudia, sorry? it's a black screen we're seeing. We're just seeing a black screen. Oh, you don't see anything right now? Okay, bear with me. Anybody got any questions up until this point? David Santos? I'm here, but um, I'm I'm not hearing a lot of the conversation. Something's dropping out from time to time. He's gone very quiet at the moment. He's not. Okay, he's it's got to be when I. 
Yeah, I think what's happening is when I click on my screen, can you guys hear me? I can hear you. I don't hear anything fading or you guys coming hear me? Out. Yeah. 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 Yep, loud and clear. Santos, if you don't hear him, come back and then he'll, he'll repeat it. For sure. Claudio? Claudio, we don't hear you now. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm just I'm just trying to find this one slide that I, I wanted to show you guys. Um, just bear with me for one minute, please. Okay. Sorry, I thought I had it up, but I can't find it. I was really blown away by this circle that uh, you've put together, Claudio. It's it's just amazing how all those numbers turn up, like the uh, the ones at the cardinal points, and and all the symmetry and uh, the harmonics that you've discovered in this circle. It's just brilliant. One of the best things I've seen in a long, long time. And that's and that's. I think I posted it, and then uh, uh, Karen saw it and. And mentioned that you're on the show, and then said suggested. Yeah, Santos, people. we can't hear you. We, you must be must be a streaming issue on your him. end. You're I, cutting out. I can, I can yeah. hear him. I can hear him. Yeah, he's good. Right, right. What a shame because I directed those comments at, at Claudia. I want him to know how uh, he, you know how good this is. He's he's onto something just great here. It's very inspiring. Claudia? Did you hear that? Claudio? Damn, Claudio. I think it's something that he's doing. Yeah, he's got something else up now. I heard like it, it was it was cutting in and out. Yeah, it must be you when you're fiddling on your computer. Okay. Did you did you hear what Santos said? He said that it's amazing what you've done. So, yeah, I heard it's that part just at the end there. He, it was just starting to get a little bit garbled there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, you guys can see my screen. Yeah. Okay. So, again, Eris was in. Came in earlier. And this this is a little uh, a graph of what was everything that was lining up for the major conjunction that people think was in Capricorn, but it's not, it's in Sagittarius. I go by what I see in the sky. Um, I can show you some other things that approve that uh, people aren't doing it right. Um, you know, because a precession every 72 years, it shifts by one degree. You can even see that on the Gleason map or the um, Meridian of Greenwiches. Even the Royal Observatory is telling you that the, uh, the Meridian of Greenwich is shifted or whatever they want to call it. So. But anyway, back to um, this is all the events that have happened during this great conjunction that started in January. And, you know, going Pluto and Sagittarius, uh, going retrograde, and then Saturn going retrograde. And then Eris comes into Aries on June the 1st. And then it went back retrograde on July 20th. And then September 18th. Uh, Eris went back into Pisces, so she went back into the feet, so she left the head. Um, I, I'm not going to go into this into detail, but then I just wanted to show that Eris went direct. She came out of retrograde the day before the Great Conjunction. Like, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, all these things are lined up, and I'm doing another video on all these handoffs. It's like they're communicating, getting ready to do what it needs to take because we'd be coming out of the dark ages, her dark ages, because she goes around, she goes around the zodiac sign. Now she's coming out of Pisces and coming into Aries. So Santa Claustrum is going to be delivering karma. For those that are good, they're going to be good. Was there or not, then we'll see what happens, right? So some really, really mystical stuff has been happening. And again, I see, I seen the aspect for our niece's house burning. Like, not, not to see that it burned, that exactly the time that it happened, Earth was in line with Venus. So she's delivering, I know she's delivering karma too. She's delivering not karma to these, because they're staying at our house for free and they're absolutely loving it. But there's a management company 
that has given him a really heck of a time because we're only paying 800 bucks a month. Now he's trying to kick him out. They didn't start the fire. The fire department approved it, but this management company for this, whoever owns this property is being real nasty. And now he's getting all kinds of karmic uh, sufferings, let's call it for now, because all kinds of people are stepping up, including lawyers and everybody else to, to support him. So there's so many examples of when you see Eris and she's delivering. Well, that's, that's basically it in a nutshell of saying uh, how Santa Claustrum, Madonna, Mictacawaddle, Eris, Mayat, whatever you want to call her, that female energy is showing her face. She showed me through the clouds. She's showing me through many ways. And I mean, uh, we're all guided by her. And it's funny how we're all meeting. And again, I, I owe a great deal to all the people that I've learned from. So there, <clears throat> there is so much that I can talk about and so much that I can get into. Um, that uh, I, I, I is just that, don't is know that what you, is that where what you anybody, if anybody's got any questions. Is that what that you wanted to show Santos? Sorry, is that what you wanted to show Santos? And now talking then, Claudio. Well, no, I can keep going. I, just, I, I can keep going, but I just want to make sure that I answer any kind of questions. If there's no more, I'll just keep going. Santos, David? I'm, I'm following. It's all right. I'm going to yep i've got no questions claudio all good brother yeah just keep uh i guess um presenting yeah and it's all clear loud and clear from my perspective yeah we're good i can hear all right yeah carry on is he gone he's gone no, there he is is he yeah we lost him for a second he's back now Claudio, they said that they heard everything. You'll have to hear it on the mask, you know, when it's played on the on the channel. But they said that they haven't they're listening to you, so they want you to carry yep. on. I heard them, yep. Thank you. It must be a little bit of a delay or something. Maybe that's it. You and Santos are on a bit of a delay. Me and David aren't. Um I think Santos is all right actually. I it might be you, Claudio. <laughs> carry on then, Claudio. Well, yeah, it could be because I'm in, I am in, I am in Aruba, so um, so on the great alignment, I went back and I looked to see a major weather happened. And as there is, there was two cyclones or hurricanes that come cyclones in the other side of the world, but there was one major one that started on January the 12th. I have these, these videos can be seen on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, but it's, it is 100% that, uh, that she caused and was part of with the luminaries, all this stuff. So all, all these different things that have happened. Um, I, I don't want to go into detail here to be redundant, but I, if, if people want to go through this, you can see that all these alignments are acts are like 100% lined up with this weather patterns. Man is not doing it. Government is not doing it. Somebody wants to, I don't know. They're, I don't know. I don't know what people are doing to try to either trying to make money on their clicks or what they're doing to try to scare people, whether it's the government doing it. I, I don't know, but uh, uh, the luminaries are 100% controlling the weather. It's uh, it's repeatable. It's predictable. Again, I'm still working on the where. Because the wins I've got, I've got pretty much uh, nailed down. So you can see on this slide that I'm showing you, the peak was January 12th, 13th, and here's the data. For the site and go figure. It's called Cyclone Claudia. Coincidence, I guess. Haha. <laughs> well, so then we had uh, three volcanic volcanic eruptions on the the 11th and the 12th. So a tell volcano became very active. I went through and I just talked about all the different things that are happening. I'm showing some potentials of the where, because this is research, so I'm sharing my research. I'm not saying this is exactly right, but you can see Uranus. Uranus is, the, is in charge of wind. I mean, it's, it looks like a windmill to me, but everything that I've been following, uh, I know the different conjunctions that Uranus is in, uh, we get winds. And it was 
at the exact time Uranus was in line with the tall volcanic eruption and then the whole great conjunction. So, and then you can go and look at Mama Moon. She's the, she's the keyboard player. She, she's the fastest one that touches everybody. So, and you can see how the handoffs go. So then uh, you, people can go and watch this video. And then I started looking at, okay, so Final. Hello. Yeah. Sorry, we just lost you for a second. Now carry on. On January the seventeenth, and it's right there, and you can see that that the sun started square on the eighth with Uranus, and you can see that Mama Moon started its uh, opposition with Earth, Persephone, right? And there's all kinds of other things you can start seeing. Sun trying with Hygieia. Hygieia is the cleanup. She she's the cleanup. Queen, that's what I call her, and uh, you'll, you'll, she had, she gave me this cleanse in my throat. So it's, it's amazing how when you start looking at a lot of the stuff I learned from Santos and how the body behaves and the, the throat chakra and what I had in my chart, um, so many of these things are really predictable, but you can't disclude Eris because she's the one that you can really dial in with, and because. Uh, um, NASA calls her an asteroid. Nobody pays attention, and they don't pay attention to the other, the other luminaries like Ceres and Pallas and Hygieia and Vesta, the Vestal Virgins, which I got an amazing lesson from that I put on Facebook, and we'll get into here. There's a whole other discussion. So then I just this video just shows you all the different. Uh, uh, Things that I'm wa that I that I was watching and uh, and somebody asked me what what happened on the, uh, on the on the 19th and well I know we got like 20 something feet of snow on the other side of uh, uh, on the eastern coast of of Canada and buried people or houses so it's all there it's all there I'm just now needing to get look at more and more data and hopefully I get more and more people that want to jump in and do some analysis I do have light music. Um, He's offered to help and make an app, an app such that I don't have to go and manually put these the luminary locations inside where they belong at their declination and their or their latitude. So this is uh, something that will help me out tremendously. So it's uh, it's 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 an amazing timing thing. It's an amazing luminary thing. It's invigorating to know, uh, and with everything that I've been taught from great people like Santos, Ken Wheeler, and, and so many others, and the brothers David and Dave, and I could go on and on and on, that this is all piecing together, and there's so much. Sorry, Santos. Hey, uh, Claudia, what's that word there in between conjunction and Uranus? It looks like tal. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the Tal volcano in the Philippines. Okay, okay. So w what's going on here? Uranus is in conjunction with what? And I'm not great conjunction. Say again, I, you broke up there, brother. You, could you repeat that? So, if you, yeah, so Uranus is making a straight line between the great conjunction, if you can see all those little luminaries there, Mercury, Pluto, Saturn, Ceres, and Sun. Yep. Like I said, this is research. Is this what caused Tal to go? Uranus in line with those? I don't know. Uh, this is, like I said, this is, this is just uh, a guess on my part. It's just something that I've noticed. I'm trying to look for, I'm trying to look for patterns of what makes these things. Claudia? I'm still here. I was just seeing if I okay. answered Santos question. Oh, okay. Did that answer it, Santos? Uh, yeah, yeah, it did. It did. For sure. There, there was a bit of breaking up there, though. Just so you know, guys, I'm not hearing a complete good, healthy feed. I don't know where it's coming from. 
I actually think that um, it's Claudio when he's actually messing around with his computer and he's blanking things out. And can I just say something as we're here, Santos? Do you remember the last hangout we had and you, we said that that noise was happening? We had a hangout next with Martin Leakey, but flat earth British. And the only person that had the same marble sound going round and round was him. So it wasn't you and it wasn't him. I just wanted to say that, by the way. Right, there you go. Okay. It's them. Could be. It could be. Yeah, it could be when I'm moving my cursor around or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Carry on then, Claudio. Right. So, Santos, the other thing that I wanted to point out is that river of heaven that's 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 shown on the three six nine. That's at the approximately twenty eight degrees Sagittarius. That is the, that's lining up with the Milky Way. It plays it plays a major factor in all this and. Um, this pole shift that everybody's talking about, well, all these luminaries, this great conjunction happened right around the Milky Way. And they're all, they were all jumping across the river of heaven, so to speak. So if, if you do get a chance, Santos, to watch a couple of my videos, I, I'd like some feedback from you, brother. Yeah, well, I, I saw the, the one that I posted on Facebook and... Um, and on my YouTube channel as well. So that's probably the only one. How many more videos have you got, got on there? Uh, probably half a dozen. Beautiful. I'll, I'll go in there and check them out for sure and post them on my, uh, on my timeline as well. Get people to you know, uh, share and, and like and subscribe, etc. just to continue you know, supporting your work and making it grow because this, this is really, really good. Now, all of these placements of Capricorn there just over Australia, is that your, have you deliberately done that? So, so you've got Capricorn and Aquarius over Australia, right? So did you choose that or that's just random? I'm, I'm, I'm not following you. Can you ask it again, please? Well, the map that I see up, you've got Capricorn outside the ring of the yes. Earth and Capricorn and Aquarius are in Australia. Is that deliberate? Did you choose that? Uh, so yeah, what I did is I dialed this. So at that exact time of the conjunction, that's where the luminaries were. So all these luminaries, and if you look at all the different, if you look at all the, on, on their stint back and forth on their ecliptic. So yeah. Yeah, this is all for manual Photoshop. Like I said, light music has helped me try to automate it. Right. Nice. We sorted then on that one. This was Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So it'd be nice when somebody finds out the calculations and the equations so we don't need to rely on them and just using uh, epiphanous data, ephemeris, or however you pronounce I think it's um, just a connection thing that's going I've been on. Playing with, with it. this app, so we can see how these luminaries and these these um, different patterns that they're making lined up with the different uh, major weathers, which will also help people for their internal weather because I I, I feel it like the sore throat that I got that lasted I knew exactly when it was going to go away. And it did. I did that with my wife uh, two years ago. It's all cleanses. It's not viruses. They're lying. People are lying. They're not viruses. They're luminary cleanses. They're in your chart. I've got proof. Uh, I haven't put anything together as far as a video or anything else, but I've got snapshots and I follow it. And when, we, when it's time for a cleanse, we cleanse. All these energies are trying to clean our body. And if we have a whole bunch of filth in there, we feel really crappy. Hmm. And that works, that works for every chakra, including the head chakra. So when mama comes back and there's filth in our head. I just wondered what Santos's take on that then. About, yeah. yeah, about the flus and things being cleansers, luminary cleansers. I think that's what uh, Claudio calls them, yeah? I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. The body knows how to detox so when you sneeze your um you know your uh, that's the liver being congested so the organs get congested and they talk to us i guess so 
all this pain as well. Pain is there to tell us that uh, something is needing to be healed. So I would agree with that for sure. Thanks, Santos. Claudio? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome to hear, brother. It's awesome to hear. It's, uh, I mean, uh, it's like all these, it can't be coincidence. And all these people are lining up in our lives, me and my wife's lives. Uh, we're renting a place uh, from somebody, a local in Aruba, so we can stay longer because we just have amazing abilities that we're going to get into more when we have more discussions. We just briefly spoke today, but uh, there's obviously a reason why we're here with this family. And uh, it's pretty, 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 uh, pretty, pretty amazing that once you jump in and say hi to the Madonna and understand that she's coming around the mountains when she comes, if you look up the story of she'll be coming around the mountains, it's about the Madonna as well. It's about her. Ha. Of course. Whenever any song is talking what's about the, she, I, I got, it's, go it, always, it always goes back to the Madonna, Isis, Mary. Can everybody hear? Right, I just oh, got to yeah, figure out what yeah. the six white horses are. It might be the same thing as the, uh, the uh, white buffalo calf woman. So if uh, no other questions, I'll just go on to another screenshot that I wanted to show you guys. Claudio? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just, uh, I'm just uh, having the next screen up. Okay, on the, on the actual computer, it's just your icon, not the screen. But on my phone, I can see a map. Yep. Yeah, but it's not on the computer right oh, now. No. Yeah, I was, just getting it, I was just getting it ready. Do you see it now? That's it, yeah. Okay, so this is the Gleason map. And oh, by the way, I did make a typo. It was early, early in the morning that I had Capricorn and Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of, uh, of uh, Cancer in the two your green rings in the wrong location. But I did, I, it is pinned there. I thank the one brother for pointing that out. So this is the Gleason map, and I've been playing with the UTC time zones, right? So, hang on a second. Let's see here. See the Merid the meridian of Greenwich. Twelve o'clock noon. And then each hour is UTC one, UTC two, UTC three, UTC four, UTC five, right? And UTC five is supposed to be Eastern Standard Time. Or well, when you look at this, no, uh, it's not. Eastern Standard Time is in UTC six. So what's happened? Same thing as tropical versus sidereal astrology. So it's off by from everybody from what we know is 23 degrees. It makes sense to me right now. That's that's roughly it. But I'm I'm not taking that as uh, gospel because I'm going to work it out myself. And I don't know if Santos has anything to share with that or not. But uh, and the Royal Observatory, the Royal Observatory knows that something is shifting, and that's why they're calling it a pole shift. So everybody's starting to realize that things have shifted. So I'm also wanting to do, and if anybody has any information, there used to be, it used to be called the Meridian of Alexandria. So the Meridian of Alexandria was obviously back in a time when the procession was in a different age. So I can understand how tropical works because it shifts one degree every 72 years. So if you're studying astrology and you're off, you will notice a pattern and you'll think that it's okay from the last 72 years from the last 72 years but when you look at it overall you're going to miss things like you're going to miss this great conjunction that just happened in sagittarius which is was over the river of heaven right before and it's right the day the day before uh, sorry the day after Paris, persephone madonna went direct so these are all timed luminary handoffs communications uh you can uh, you can just see them happening these handoffs it's like a relay race it's beautiful and it's invigorating so i i am working another on another video showing the handoffs from now till uh december 21st because that was um um help me out karen uh, the gentleman we were talking with last i'm drawing a blank on his name that asked me if I could look into what's happening on December 21st, because he's doing something as well. Um, what, on Hangout, you mean? Yeah. Costa. Um, he came at Costa, Brother Costa. Yeah, so Costa. Oh, yeah. 
cost a thing. Mm. Yeah, Sorry, so I'm working that. on that one. Yeah, I'm working on that one, and, and that is the one that I started showing where all the different all the different uh, ages of as used and renamed Madonna into something else. But I can tell you this: that December twenty first used to be the the, the the Christmas day, the New Year's day. So they're all different names, and then because of precession, the twenty first became the twenty fifth. Right, the twenty fifth became the first, and the first is now the fourteenth. And if you follow the Indians, the Eastern Indians, they still follow the fourteenth. So it's roughly around between the twelfth and the fourteenth is the New Year's Day, the Christ, when the Christ is coming, because Sirius is due south, exactly due south at midnight on that night. And so, of course, that would have been on the twenty first many, many years ago, and then it shifts to the twenty fifth. And then it shifts and it shifts and it shifts. I'm trying to find the relationship between that and Persephone as well. So between Sirius, right? And we know that the Sirius is, uh, is, is part of the We Three Kings of Orion Tar, right? That's Orion's belt. I learned that from Santos as well. So they, they, they're westward leading, still preceding. So the procession, right? So knowing that the Egyptians put those three pyramids right there on the river of heaven, which lines up with the circle of 60, um, this, this is something that needs to be discussed and, and grow upon. It's a beautiful thing. So the Meridian of Alexandria is going to be a, is going to be a key. Uh, us not fitting on the Gleason map as far as the UTC codes go, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. We've, uh, we've, we've lost our way. We're coming out of the dark ages. Our collective consciousness is growing. Can see it, can feel it. Uh, things happen to me, and I just take it with a grain of salt because it's supposed to, I'm supposed to have patience because I know that I'm going to meet somebody and I'm being delayed. And don't worry about it. I'm wondering, why can't I get my phone fixed? I've I got to make sure I get everything lined up for this talk that we're having today. But it had nothing to do with that. It was to meet that fine young gentleman in the lobby that worked at the hotel, he was, he was, he's, he's awakening. And same with the girl that traveled to Egypt. And she said, she's gifted, but she had to shut it down because she could see everybody's aura and it would, it would not sit well with her when she was, uh, when she was young. I told her she needs to get back into it. She would, numbers would be going crazy in her head when she's little and all these beautiful colors. So, uh, I can see them. I've had m many experiences myself with these beautiful colors that come out of me and start swiping from side to side and then going to sp speak to somebody and it locks in right on their, right where their third eye is located. I mean, it's invigorating. So the collective consciousness is growing. It's incredible. And that's because Eris is coming into Aries. And I know I want to see, I want to see how Santos, uh, Santos is probably going to start flying or something when the Eris comes into his brain. <laughs> yeah, well, it was interesting anyway, because was when Uranus... When, <laughs> I, know there's a, I know there's a delay. Yeah, there is. Uh, when Uranus entered Aries in around 2011, uh, well, I, I uh, felt the effect of that. It was really palpable, really. It's incredible. So that's going to be interesting because it, it'll enter Aries. Aries... Eris will enter Aries in around my birthday, right? Claudia? Yeah, in, in May. In May, she comes back into Aries. Ah, okay. Yeah, great. In May, forward. she comes back into Aries. <laughs> great. That's interesting. Really interesting. Yep. I mean, we know everybody's going to have a different perspective on it because everybody's DNA or their chart is different, right? Yes. So you like what you're seeing then, Santos? You like what Claudio is saying? So that's pretty much... Worked? Oh. So I was just asking Santos, do you like, you like what you're seeing then, Santos? You like what he's talking about? Oh, yeah. This is like, this is mostly transcendental science because it's, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's at, once you start dealing with the luminaries, astrology, and their influence on the mundane, uh, you're talking transcendental. And this is why people 
uh, can't seem to follow because it's uh, for them it's it's not anything that they can really uh, relate to with, with their education. So this sort of stuff for me is you know what I wake up to every morning and go to sleep with. It's it. It's the only thing that inspires me, and and it is good. Yeah, uh, Claudio's uh, approach is quite unique. This is what we need. We need people with a unique approach to it because syncretism is everybody's, right? So everybody owns it, and it's like um, like Wikipedia, right? So there are multiple writers, and they all make an article complete by adding their pieces to it. So. Uh, this is how syncretism is going to going to take more shape as we go on in the future with great revelations like Claudio's. It's fantastic. There you go, Claudio. Claudio. Yeah, not, I I cut I cut yeah I caught most of what Santos said, but it was it was garbled and I wasn't touching anything. I turned my screen share off and didn't touch my mouse, so I'm not sure what's happened. But yeah, no, I I agree with you, Santos. I learned that word from you, synchronicity. Um, it's uh, it, and studying Ken Wheeler and his metaphysics. I mean, our right brains are one. It's in the zero one one. Zero is the absolute. The first one is our yin, and the second one is our yang. The G meaning the seven colors of light we can see. Right? It's our material side, and knowing that the other one is all the same with us. We have this the charioteer that is driving this chariot is the same one in each and every one of us. And it's being illuminated by Eris, big time. And she's coming out of our, she's, as she was traversing for the last uh, 50 years or so through Pisces, people are starting to wake up over the last 20 years, more so than, than the, we know. And that's because she's heading towards the claustrum. And uh, it's, it's invigorating to know and see. I just wondered, David, do you have any thoughts? The only other thing that I was going to, sorry, go oh. ahead. I was just saying, David, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, but we can, Claudio, you want to carry on? You were just about to say something and then I'll pop in after that if that's all right. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Claudio? Well, this was, uh, this was yep, yep, this was to the both of you, uh, uh, Santos and David, because I know you're both of Italian heritage, is that. Uh, I also did a, a video on La Madonna di Canetto and showing how that was just a whole other group of people there that understood uh, Phi wisdom, the one and the zero, because the glyph of Phi is a zero and the one. So it's the absolute and the yin. So um, when I did that, I found out that, it, it, lo and behold, this whole story of La Madonna di Canetto happened, obviously, in, near my dad's hometown in, uh, in La Chucheria. And uh, I found out that my heritage, my Indian background, that I'm a Samnite. And the Samnites were another, you know, another tribe that came from the Pythagoreans, Platonists, those guys. You know what I'm saying? So everybody comes back from then. So I just wanted to share with you guys that I know I'm a Samnite. So when somebody says, I'm an Indian, I'm going to say, well, we're all Indians, aren't we? We're all from the same spot some, as the earth. So we're all Indians and we got to stop the separatism thing because I'm an Indian and I'm going to go to my government and say, I'm an Indian and I want my Indian rights, which I've already done through the legal system. Anyway, I've already set my whole uh, notice of uh, claim of recognition and known of understanding to the governor general of Canada, claiming back all my rights. Of course, I know they just file it and then let you be on your own and going into court. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, I, that's basically all that I wanted to share today uh of course whatever discussion we wants to have and let you know that i'm a sam knight go ahead david what part of italy were you folks from claudio what what part of italy mine were from calabria right down south both parents yeah my mom was from i gotta i'm gonna wait a bit because there might be a delay my mom was from tuscany and my dad was from Ceccano Frosinone. Frosinone is in which region? I, I, I actually didn't hear any, none of that came across at all. He wanted to know which region your parents came from. No, Frosinone, which, which region is Frosinone from? 
Ah, uh, when you say region, it's it's well, we, it's the Chucharia, Chicharo, um, Pro, Provincia di Frosinone. Okay, yeah, but that's not the region. Tuscany's a region, so that gives me more or less. There's 20 regions. So Calabria is down south, and you mentioned one of your parents is from Tuscany, so that's a region. So Frosinone would be in a region, like for instance Lazio. Um, Campania, Lazio, no, Lazio. Like Lazio, sorry, Lazio, yeah. There, there there you go. So, so. Lazio is the original word for the word Latin. So, when people are thinking about anything Latin, it always goes to this region where Claudio's other parent comes from, Lazio. Lazio is the region around uh, Rome, and so. This is where everything Lazi or Latino comes from. So you, you are a true Latino and a true Etruscan because you have one parent from the Roman stock, uh, the Latin, and the other one from Tuscany, which is Etruscan. So you, you're pretty, uh, man, you, you're pretty unique there, really, when you think about that combination. Wow. Wow, that's awesome! Thank you for sharing that. That's that's really amazing. That uh, makes sense too. With uh, Lazio being Latin, and I know uh, there was some things that I've stumbled upon upon that uh, that that region. I mean, and and every there's so many different regions around the world that had all these different tribal people that knew truth. They were just segregated it with time, I guess. Yes. Do you, do you, it's telling me, though, that we're all immigrants then, all of us, because I have German, Jewish, French relatives on my dad's side, my mum's Welsh. Yep, we are. We're all, we're all immigrants, really, because you're Italians living in um, Canada, living in Australia. <laughs> yep. David, David's also an Italian. Yes. So none of us are in our original country. That's right. No. Because no, no. we don't No, you see what's happened with the with the advent of the Jesuits and then the takeover of the Freemasons, uh, everything of our history has been pretty much uh, I wouldn't say wiped out. It hasn't been wiped out. They can't do that. You know, uh, there's evidence that only just a few hundred years ago, every culture really knew their astrology, their their syncretism, their sacred sciences. It's just been covered over, kind of, you know, with with mud. But it's still there. That's how come we can still do syncretism. So this corruption, this real final blow against the world, the world of syncretism and truth and the Tartarian model that was still around even in in uh, Bolshevik Russia, you know, up till the Bolsheviks. Uh, really, we just can't possibly know exactly how history has been. And yeah, I would say we are all immigrants. You know, Italy is made up of so many peoples. You can go from one town to another and virtually be speaking a new a new language. I speak Calabrian, which is a dialect. So I'm very fortunate to have that dialect. I was grow I was brought up with it. And then I had to learn Italian separately in my teen years. I had to do that. And if I didn't, I would not know Italian. I had to learn it. So I didn't really speak Italian from 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 birth. I was speaking a dialect. It's similar, of course, but but still it has so many different things and that's how Italy is such a, a melting pot really you've got the darker shorter Phoenician type I think you mentioned that as well uh, about the Phoenicians in Calabria so it's um, there's the, the, the Greco bloodline as well all throughout Naples, that's a Greek word actually, Neapolis, Naples. Uh, and I think David's parents, one of David's parents is from Naples. So that's very Greekish. Mine is, my 
blood would be more akin to the Phoenicians, I would say, the Easterners, the Persians. Lots of Persian influence in Italy as well. They were Mithraics before the Christian period. So Italy was incredible. In, in the Neoplatonic days, Rome was the most syncretic place ever. There were people worshipping Isis, temples to Isis, and Egyptian pyramids everywhere there. There was a good Persian in Hindu um, representation as well. All the gods were there. You know, it was beautiful because it was all understood to be astrological and that all the gods were luminous beings in the heavens. Everything above the earth plane is transcendental, really. It's all pertaining to the gods. So there's really only one language. It's etymological. Uh, that's what causes languages. You know, the word of God is the Taurus field. That's all it is, the atom. That is the word of God because they are speaking forth the creation. As the atoms, all these atom, go forth into the universe, they are just replicating what God's mind wants. You know, it's it's... It's the mo the Godhead at the monad is is the thing the one who has all is in that one the monad and then the monad becomes the dyad and then the creative world begins and then all of the thoughts from the one are expressed into that cosmological world through numbers and letters and that's what Tauruses and atoms are they are numbers and letters quantities and qualities pulses and waves it's a pulse wave universe it's not a particle wave universe and so the numbers come from the heartbeat of the atoms they are just beating dum dum they have a frequency and then that frequency radiates outwardly and causes a transverse wave which is the letters of the universe all the letters come come from the from the transverse wave. So it is a numbers and letters universe, Gematria, for sure. That's why I like what Claudio is presenting because it's the, you know, numbers par excellence. It's put on a wheel, it's related to the astrology, it is synchronized and it is syncretized. So those two words, when they come together, in science it's beautiful because to synchronize something means to bring it together in time and therefore unity consciousness and then to syncretize is to bring everything together in your mind you know in your thinking so that they are all harmonious and interrelatable which they are they have to be all right i'll hand it over to someone else thank you santos david <laughs> uh, I'm here. All right, thank you. Uh, well said, brother. That was uh, poetry in motion. It almost making me think that man being atomic and the the heart reference in the the centre of the atom with the beat and frequency on the on the cymatic. But don't let me digress. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch to Claudio, and then after I've done that with what he said and what he's covered there, my feedback on that, and then. I'd like to uh, just, uh, yes, pitch to uh, Santos about recent things and, and where we are. So uh, um, sit down and strap in, all right. Uh, my uh, area is, um, what was I going to say now? It's Siciliano in uh, Sicily, um, where my granddad Vincent is from. So, yeah, I've got Greek and Italian side. So, um, Silvaggi, Bonacci and Jeremita. Uh, interesting and uh, I'm honoured. Um, to be with you boys so uh, um, yeah the circle what he's got what um, Claudio showed us um, he did explain on a previous um, podcast we had hangout that uh, he obtained those numbers by using a um, the golden ratio or um, something like that he is very accurate it has got striking uh, connotations with with um, um, as above so below so below as a buff you know we've got the uh cherubims and so forth in the in the bits that we've we've read about and the electromagneto um you know frequency where universe matter antimatter what we see and our research and discovery is uh yeah he's blown me away i thought you'd enjoy 
his works and uh, the way he presents and is very articulate. I definitely think he's an indigo or a crystal or a rainbow or something along along our lines of uh, initiates of self, a self scholar. So, Claudio, you're a legend, and uh, I'm glad Santos has uh, taken that, you know, and uh, feedback of because I I've got some some feedback later with regards to the Christmas times and the sun and the rebirth and the celebration uh, my line of like law type work is uh, is how i've become to get linked in with the zodiac and uh, jupiter peter the the gospels and the uh, spelling uh, occult symbolism and so forth has led me to the um the sun the bible the bibliotheque the new testament uh, you know it's uh, it's very mixed up so i've come into the zodiac and the planetary alignment through a different avenue to, and met you know one's minds like santos like you said is is has been around in the game long time and uh is uh is, is put it out there um for us to contemplate and we've all gone off like you said we are that that was good that about wikipedia type uh um you know as some um, influence that we all write a little bit and 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 complete the, the story and only together doing that will we and that's exactly with josephus and um and Joseph Atwill and things like that, you bang on because uh, Caesar's Messiah, um, again, mass is massive. The journey and the works that we do, I have enough love and appreciation for this because, um, yeah, it is coming together in Aries and the dictionaries and the constabularies and the, the Aries connection there. I just uh, thought I'd, uh, I'd throw in because those dictionaries have helped me um, decipher um, etymological gematria, numbers, ratios. Um, five pi golden etc it's uh it's it's all linked it really is so uh um the uh the zodiac um kingdom of god would be the animals and the zodiac and the, the animals in the zodiac kingdom of god um you know the zoo um the zodiac the zoo they're linking on zoology um and with the moon and the sun the rebirth and the savior the, you know it's just amazing how we've got the the different stories uh as you've pointed out there uh, and, and Santos gave the feedback all I'll say is that I've got into this now with the notice of the what was it the 10th of Jan to the 13th of Jan this I, I know it's a bit of an important time for the new year on the 12th we had with the um, timing of the you know different calendar alignment and how we see things so the indigo uh, lunar eclipse wow I didn't know a, a sister on another channel uh, brought this, uh, the wolf moon. Um, Santos covered the red riding hood and the wolf and the, the sing symbolism and the syncretism between, you know, the translations of this data and information. And much like the Bible, it has layers of um, ways of telling you, you know, what, what these stories are. The literalists are getting hit the most hardest, like the FE um, world, um, you know, has done... Uh, recently because we are recoding and uh, using these 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 times and dates and syncretisms that were are really satisfying for me because i'm feeling energized and charged with these you know numbers and times and claudio respect to you for linking all that in and displaying it in your own unique original you know well you know produced way there and uh, i'm uh, i'm just gonna i'm gonna leave all that there because it's, uh, it's something that's work in progress and i know um, the 21st of December is something like a 6,000 year uh, a planetary alignment of the luminary, well, most of the, the zodiac, the solar system alignment. The last time these were, um, this alignment, you know, forces, magnetism, electro um, happened was um, was 6,000 years roughly. And the, the, they were portrayed to see the heavens come down. Um, the, the, the What were they then? The, the astrologists at the time. Um, and that's because I researched the millennium um, bugs and clocks and data and times and that um, stone tablet that they said was Mayan and it was the 2012 end of calendar um, disc that they show and that's allegedly been now moved to Aztec era and you have a seven year Harbinger type uh, warning affair after 2012 which would take you to 2019 and then 2019 to 2020 December these are the final um types of times if you 
look at the and you've covered it well beyond what i can comprehend to some extent the degrees and the misalignment and the pole shifts and the different maps and stuff you've got the calendars the the different calendars the mandated liquidated calendars that weave on that are found through law and um gregorian um you know the sabbath being on the sunday here when it really is uh you know uh, the first day of the week and saturday would be the sabbath so um enoch's calendar and different planetary alignments and calendars have led us to yeah we are lost uh, wow um and you and this work and what santos has done and what i do is is all tying into a to a home true north we're all heading the same way and adding little bits so um, in reflection to space and, and planets and so forth, I did take from Santos and uh, let's, the Bible is basically like a, a guide to help man understand the Zodiac. But, you know, with regards to the KJV, it's it's a book about codes and property and rights and titles and equity. And, you know, the Old Testament has got certain other connotations to it. So you've got to be careful when we say Bible, which version, which testament, which edition, which, uh, you know, because there are massive translations in each one of each particular time and um you know that it's just uh um the degrees of this of the um of the stars and so forth uh, who used to use the stars to navigate that would be um the boat people the phoenicians and the traders and so forth they use degrees to navigate you have you know that navigation and boats using navigation and stars to navigate and stars being important and LinkedIn. So I'm uh, I'm honoured and uh, privileged to be on this hangout with such great minds. Santos knows what go on from from our chats and, and everything. And uh, I'm excited for this next uh, year <laughs> to lead up to December the 21st. I'm excited for the next 10 years. I believe there is an age upon us, and uh, with the right you know minds and information and actions, we can. Uh, I think we can achieve uh, you know an unlimited future here. With the science and the maths and the the actual solid rock solid uh, you know uh, performances that we're having, uh, um, but it is a little bit to everybody else you know overwhelming. So um, it's good that we've each got uh, different areas and works and uh, you know outlooks on stuff. Uh, Santos pretty much covers a massive area though more than you know most can cope with. Santos, you've got such a broad dexterity with your application of worldly knowledge not just limited to the zodiac but for us it's uh, other indigos and you know this channel it's uh, it's a privilege and an honor to have you because uh, on that uh, 10th of they will say uh, january where well, i'm aware because of my you know following that you had a, a special time with an anniversary of the first time you put your video up and uh, on, on youtube was it mr astro, astro theology it was a a nine-year um, anniversary into the ninth realm did you call it <laughs> well done kudos brother yeah well that was the first episode on people for people radio it was um, on 8th of january which was the exact date of when i put up my first video on mr astro theology january 8 2011 so it was a nine-year anniversary, and that was with Jordan Maxwell. So it was pretty historical. I really appreciated that very, very much. You know, forgive me for having a, a couple of days out there. Yeah, deal. We got a lot of numbers going off, but yeah, I was wanting to close down the the commentary and the link on to to that because that in itself, with um, with the timing of what uh, you've said there, and you know the the amount of work. Uh, yeah, but I've promoted on indian on the on our private domain that uh, chat with brother jordan because uh, i explained it as like two two of the jedis coming together for a for a uh, end of year like uh, i don't know chat and meeting and um i'm tr i'm really honored to have uh, been able to have seen that and to for jordan at uh, his age 80 odd is it 80 thereabouts and uh, the uh, you know the, the the outlay of what he's put and uh, you know, to have him say to you the things that he said there, um, accreditations and, uh, um, you know, connotations of how he's now got extra further down the line with the discovery. And he never saw, he knew it was something of gravitas. And uh, when he linked in the planets and the uh, not so much the theological, but the astro theological and the, the, the energies and, and so forth, uh, Saturn and, uh, you know, Kronos time all of the uh, comparisons and uh, with the Egyptians and the uh, swapping over um, 
and yeah, it's uh, it's a credit to you. I was uh, I was ecstatic to see that, uh, and uh, um, Jordan uh, still being around doing what he's doing is, uh, you know, uh, accredited that and said what he said. Uh, I'll leave it there. Yeah, it's truly remarkable times that we're in. I'm excited to be alive, and I yield. <laughs> Thank you, David. Claudio, did that answer your? Did that yeah, answer why not? It's, it's, everything you said is beautiful, man. All the kudos to Santos. The kind words you said about me. I, I always want to reiterate that if it wasn't for the, the the great leaders of Santos, Ken Wheeler, and so many more, that I, I put the credits as much as I can in all the videos. Uh, I'm just a, I don't want to use the word just because I just corrected Karen on just saying she's just when she said she's just. We're we all have uh, uh, our own little thing we need to do and all get together, and uh, uh, it's it's truly amazing um, all the different works and the people are doing and they're coming together and the synchronicity like Santos keeps saying over and over and over again. Um, I, I do want to leave this with some people because so many people say, well. What does this all mean? Well, I, th I guess it's no different than the story of Santa Claus and, and like La Befana in Italy. It's about the woman who comes around and she gives gifts to the good kids. And that story is about Persephone, Madonna, whatever name you want to call her, Mayat, Isis. So she comes around. So what people, uh, I, I would give this suggestion and I've been guided to, to look at uh, like I said, I get woken up in the middle of the night. I go turn on my computer. I go outside. Things will pop up in front of me that I know I need to learn and do. And the thing is the lunar returns. From your birth charts, your lunar, lunar return is your 12 to 13 lessons that you have to abide by. Depending on which house it is in, there's a story, a, 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 something that you need to do. Mine have been lining up with me incredibly. So these are lessons that you know that uh, have you been doing these good things in these good in the houses that the lunar returns in. So you, my recommendation to people is find out where your lunar returns are, what houses they are in, and study what the lessons are, because those are the tests. And then the gift comes on your birth date. So if you do all those lessons right, then the sun. The solar gift is what you get yearly. That's why they give presents on your birth date. But it's the lunar returns that are really important for your lessons. Because I've had so many major things happen in the last six, seven months that I've been starting to look at my lunar returns that are incredible alignments. And so when you look at the moon and you talk about your lesson and you ask for signs, they give them to you. It's incredible. I've become, I've become a vegetarian because I asked for a sign. And the story there was because I went on a fishing trip and the one big fish that we caught that I didn't know what it was because my buddy never brought it in. And a local said, good thing you didn't bring that fish in because he could have sucked you off the boat. That's how big his mouth is. So my lesson to me there was, if you eat us, we can eat you. So that's just for me. It's on my own journey. And I'll tell them they need to be a vegetarian. Although if you want to go and look, all the original Pythagoreans, Egyptians, all them, those, they were all vegetarians. But it's important to start looking at your lunar returns. That's how mama is going to grade you as she's coming in and out of your head and looking at your claustrum and seeing if it's good or not good. So I just wanted to drop that out there. I don't know, Santos, if you can add anything to that, that'd be greatly appreciated. But uh, lunar just, returns. Go ahead. Sorry, can I just say something? Very important words in this whole thing are nearly your surname. Santos, uh, Geometia, and Claudio. Just wanted to say that, by the way. Um, also, is this why they're changing the Bible all the time then? Because they've got to, to match up, because everything's moving, and they've got to match this Bible up to um, those dates. Just wondered, guys. No, that's, a, that's a tricky question to answer, though. I could say that the Old Testament has got, you know, the Hebrew and the Phoenician and like Santos and Jordan have called. If you go to that video, um, you know, and have a look at Santos and Jordan chatting, they're talking about the controlling families and the lineages. And I mentioned what we've been told to look at Josephus, Josephat, Will Caesar's Messiah, the original 
Hebrew and the, uh, the, the Old Testament is nothing like the, the New World, you know, the New World translation and um, encoding of um, certain storylines and, you know, um, bondage, slavery, um, coming with Jesus as Christ is what man is now, thanks to Santos and the works and the studies and the applications of what we've done. So I would say that the KJV um, is, a, is a handbook, we would say, in our research and diligence is a, another way of a story to be applied of property titles and rights. So each book is from a lineage in a time and an existence of, of which is a for its time, like the Black's Law editions of uh, dictionaries. If you want to research particular areas of law and you're in the 1800s, you're best off using a dictionary that's got the definitions from the 1800s, not using Black's Law 10, which they're on now in 2020 which is current definitions, you'd need the 1800 publication. So this is just a, a game that's rigged, it's full of pitfalls and uh, nastiness and um, stealing of energy and hoodwinks. And uh, I don't take pleasure in saying this, but uh, brothers, uh, the Zodiacs in there as well, as well, you know, and it's a story of the stars, but um, loosely threaded, it's, it's many things to many people. And it depends on how you look at it, is uh, the world's greatest story and uh, you know the events contained within but um it's it's, just, it's fascinated me and it's not over because you've got the assyrian the dead sea scrolls and the sumer the numa elish and certain other bits like um, zoroastrianism where we said santos before you know we touched loosely on that in that timeline lineage that i wanted to try and explore so it truly is a, a well of uh, you know a well of uh, energy <laughs> i yield santos <laughs> You want to say something? Your microphone's off. Oh, he's put it back on. Santos, do you want to answer any of that? Uh, mm, I didn't really have any particular thoughts, no. Um, I just appreciated uh, David's comments, for sure. Yeah. I meant with Claudio as well, because he, he said quite a lot as well. Ah, oh, that's right. He had a question for me. Um, I forget. Yeah, I got to try to remember. I got to try to remember it myself now. My my brain's going in so many different directions. This is so invigorating. Uh, I'll try to I think of it and I'll, I'll repeat it. Okay. Um, I don't know how much oh, longer. Not, I've gone there. I remember what it was. It was to do with the lunar return, Santos. If there's anything that you can, uh, I don't know if you're sure if you've uh, studied those or not. Um, probably you probably have, but if there's anything you can add to that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, look, that's one of the features of astrology. I tend to use the solar returns more. Uh, I find that by the time I've done a solar return, transits, progressions, and everything else, uh, I don't get much time to do a, like a lunar return. But, um, yeah, they're all benef beneficial, guys. The mechanisms of the universe are so reliable and so uh, uh, predictable that once you monitor them, tap into them, and uh, follow the courses of the luminaries, you'll be able to see how everything unfurls at their order, you know, at their, at their direction, really. Because returns and progressions and transits and all of these things, they're all about uh, sonoluminescence and frequency. So when a planet is said to be in a sign, it means that it is now uh, channeling energy from that part of the heavens uh, onto the earth theater plane. So each sign has its own frequency. There are 12, of course. They all have their own signature frequency. And then within the signs, there are many other little compartments. There's what's called the deacons, for instance. There's also what's called the terms. And so every sign is divided into five terms, ruled by one of the five luminaries, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, or Mercury. And so each five planet has a certain amount of degrees allocated to it within a sign. So, for instance, the first 
six degrees of Aries belong to Jupiter. Those are the terms of Jupiter. Then the next uh, eight degrees belong to Venus, then five to Mercury, then four to Mars, and I think five to Saturn. And that would make up 30 degrees. And um, so not only do the signs get their specializations, the three faces or the three deacons, and then the five terms, but also there are 30 degrees. And each degree has its own frequency as well. So any given planet on any specific degree can be stimulating certain frequencies at the time. And not only does every degree have its own frequency and its own meaning and significance and power, but each minute of that degree. And then within the minutes, there are 60 seconds as well. And each of those seconds, they all have their own frequency and their own meaning. So this is how astrology can be the most accurate predictive science there is. Once we have enough data to be able to put into any m machine or a computer to be able to compute all of the findings, we will know what, ev what every degree, minute and second of arc of astrology, what it could possibly mean. And this is how the ancient Egyptians and Babylonians used to make the most accurate predictions without ever failing because they knew that if for instance the sun is in let's say the third degree of Aries right they would go to their books and they would look at the third degree and the third degree would have let's say it's a degree of war right now that doesn't mean you just wait for the sun to go into the third degree of Aries and then you start a war because that's the degree of war. No, you would then wait for the correct minute to turn up because there might be minutes within that degree where the warning is do not start a war at this minute of this degree because you will lose because they will have the upper hand because it's not the right frequency to begin a war. So they might have to wait even just 30 seconds for the next minute to clock up to find a good one for attacking. Then not only do they wait for that, they will also wait for the, the, the second, the right second to turn up because again, there will be 60 different seconds within that minute, within that degree, whereupon you should not act and this is how <laughs> this is how incredible this science is and this is why rome and all empires burn and destroy or withhold the information for instance there will be many many astrological volumes out there in the Library of the Vatican, which will actually tell you what the different meanings of all the different minutes and seconds of arc, what their meanings are. You know, if you had all that information and you were uh, privy to it and had access to it and could use it, you would be able to make accurate con predictions every single time without fail and this is how powerful the science is and why rome went after great works of astrology for instance porphyry my favorite philosopher astrologer of all, of all time the neoplatonist of the fourth century his 12 uh works on astrology were in the witch hunts were were um 
hunted and seeked out all over the world and destroyed. And now you cannot have 12, the Porphyry's 12 works on astrology. So, and he's not the only astrologer of antiquity who has suffered this fate. You know, we, we still have older astrologers like Marcus Manilius, Ptolemy, um, Vettius Valens, Firmicus Maternus, Claudius Ptolemy I've already mentioned, who had the, uh, the model before Copernicus. For thousands of years, the Ptolemaic model was, was there and then all of a sudden it was supposedly debunked by Copernicus. Uh, well, these, all of these astrologers, we have all their works, but what happened to Porphyry's? Well, you see, this is where you have to ask, the, the question is begging, what, what else have they destroyed that, that, uh, that we don't know? Because once it's destroyed, it's out of your uh, field of knowledge. And, and so we really don't know. But this is the thing that I've, that always causes me to contemplate deeply. You know, what would we, where would we be if we had the knowledge of all those degrees, minutes and seconds of arc, because the secret of divination and uh, prognosticating the future and, and uh, foretelling is in those degrees that were carefully preserved for thousands and thousands of years by the great nations of antiquity. Then came the Jesuits, and the Jesuits inverted everything. They had to, because in the, the old Tartarian world, everybody lived peacefully. There was forbearance and tolerance. Uh, you would worship Isis on a Friday, or Islam, Isis Lam. You would be uh, worshipping Saturn on Saturn Day, every Saturn Day. Uh, you'd be worshipping the sun or Mithras on a Sunday. Uh, every Thursday, you would be going to your Christian church, Jupiter Zeus, Jesus. You'd be, you'd be practicing Christianity. And every day, you would acknowledge one of the seven luminaries. And it didn't mean you had to be just Christian, you know, just a Thursday worshipper. You were all of those things. It's, you just wore a different hat every day because... Every day had different energy. So, and this is also in the day you're born. I was born on a Sunday. Uh, solar people are very vital. They've got lots of energy. They love public life. And they also like to be retiring because the sun is sol, solo and loves to be alone. Solitary. So... It describes you, it defines you. You know, if you're born on a Tuesday, you'll find that you are very, you know, most people who are sportive and athletic, they were born on a Tuesday because that's Mars. Marathon, martial activities. You know, people who were born on Wednesdays, you'll find that those are writers, clerics, uh, speakers, politicians, um, lawyers communicators, travellers, etc., etc. So, uh, going back to the knowledge of astrology, once you understand how cycles work, everything is atom, all is Taurus fields, and as those Taurus fields express themselves, they express themselves astrologically. So every wave of energy must begin at Aries and finish at Pisces. And waves are repeatable, they're predictable, and they are essentially how the universe is made and replicates itself through these waves, astrological waves. And <clears throat> because there is one big wave, one big atom, the ruler of the universe, Adam uh, becomes, is an anagram for monad. Monad, Adam, 
atom, it means unit. Unit is unity, oneness, the monad. All of these are the same word. So at the top of our Godhead nature, there is this monad, this unity. And so when the universe is created, there is one big wave, one big atom. And from that, all its little children, all its small atoms in varying sizes and, and magnitudes are then propagated through the universe. And essentially, they all copy the big wave. They are all fractals of the big wave. And then as they express themselves through time, they change positions to each other. Then there is all kinds of variances to the dimension, the timeline. And this is why astrology is the only science that can forecast everything backward and forward in future because those planets are always making new shapes and new configurations as they go through the ecliptic and circle above the heavens in circles daily yearly and throughout time and they're always changing their various shapes and projecting from the constellations down to the theater of earth projecting different waves and thoughts and emotions and we are basically just uh, like swimming and walking through those waves imbuing them uh, living them speaking them in our lives so Atum, the sun, is the, the primary thinker of the cosmos. The primary intellect of the universe is the sun. It is, is a, it is a consciousness expander. That's why solar work is so important when you do sun gazing, grounding, put your palms out to the sun as Akhenaten taught and receive the rays of the sun into your body through the eyes through the face through the palms palm is lamp both anagrams of each other lamps the lamps of your body are your palms you see when you when you turn your palms around to the sun which is very rare how often do you see people just facing their palms to the sun well not at all it's it's usually the back of their hand that is facing the sun as they're walking toward the sun or looking at it so you, they never think to put their palms out but the moment you do you're creating a loop where you are now harvesting solar energy and you are looping with the consciousness of the of adam or tom all is a tom the book of enoch says the son's name is thomas and thomas of course is thomas didymus the twin the twin means it's the it's it's the dyad. The sun is the, the the archon or the cosmocrator of creation of this world, the theater on the earth. The world is really the earth. It's one and the same. Mondo, Mondo is an, an anagram for Adam and Monad. The Monad makes the Mondo. And Mondo, when you remove the M, gives you ondo or ondulate, undulate the wave. So mondo means the wave. Atom, adom means the wave. You see, and waves are always expressed in time. Again, time is another anagram or another word for atom, at time, because vowels are interchangeable. So Time is tempo, is Kronos, is Saturn. So again, Tim and Tom. 
tom is also time when you play your tom toms a drummer knows he keeps time by playing his tom toms well again it's that's what atom means because all is a tom it must mean time and it must mean the wave so the only way to understand waves is astrologically in the world you are taught that a wave is positive and negative and that's it it's limited to two things whereas astrology teaches you that there are 12 divisions in every cycle circle not two it's too simplistic there are 12 seasons not just summer and winter or four seasons which is would be spring summer autumn and winter and isn't it interesting how usually they when you when you when you ask someone to tell you the seasons where do they usually begin you can someone give me some feedback which is the first season I was going to say go for it go on David I was privy to his chat with brother um, uh, over day and I was going to say Matthew because they also could be like the chapters of the Bible but most people start in spring I would I would argue yes uh, spring sorry Claudio all right what else anyone else got well this is like a test for me Santos because you've said it before and I have studied your work but for me well, uh, the big the beginning season is uh at the bottom of the wheel yeah there you go there you go so but i usually hear people in australia saying summer autumn winter spring you know which is okay it's absolutely okay but you see how how astrology can bring everything home to the centered truth you can start with Aries, you can start with Cancer, you can start with any one of the cardinal signs. Winter would be a logical place because that's the start of the sun's waxing cycle. The goat has to climb from the 25th. You can observably see on the horizon, if you are a stargazer like myself, you can see the sun inching to the right uh once it's once it hits capricorn sorry uh let me see for you guys it's the left you'll see from the northern hemisphere when the sun hits the solstice on the 21st of december it just sits there for three days and then begins inching to the left as it goes toward the tropic of cancer you can see it moving if you have your markers ready and you're watching the horizon as i used to do every year in Australia so what you're seeing there is a starting point but really when you understand how waves work you would want to bring the beginning to the center at the equator where Aries and Libra are at the equinoxes because there's no extremities everything is balanced and centered you see Capricorn is over to the right cancer is over to the left they are the extreme wave amplitude points the crab is crabby and the goat is capricious and well why well see one is water and one is earth of course at wave amplitude you're, you're going to have the feminine material energy represented the heavy frequencies of course, there's going to be water, cardinal water over to the left and then or to the top, however you're envisaging, you know, the expression of the wave. I like to look at it as a helix, not as a spiral. A spiral is two dimensional. So if you look at it as, as the wave is helical and you'll see it going through a tunnel like a Birkeland current tunnel, very electrical, you will see that there will be four cardinal points around that circle and every circle has four cardinal points so but if you're thinking astrologically you'll bring everything back to the center and you'll realize that the starting point 
of the natural wave is the 21st of April, uh, of, of um, March. And so that's when everything begins from a balance point, right? And then the story gets unfurled from there. All of a sudden, the sun now goes away from that beautiful balance point and seeks unbalanced. It's looking, it's looking for summer. It's looking for the polarity of summer. So it climbs up to the watery skies of Cancer and closer to the, the center of the Earth at the North Pole and brings about a polarity, warmth, you know, vegetation, chlorophyll, photosynthesis. And then when it reaches that, it must then climb down the ramp or descend down the ramp and uh, to the Tropic of Capricorn at the other extremity where it brings another capricious element, unbalanced, cold, the polarity of coldness. So every part of the circle can uh, be... Uh, can be can be vying for starting place, you know. But um, it's always uh, good to let nature itself talk to you and tell you where it wants to begin and where it wants to perhaps finish its cycle. So Aries is the blossom. No other place in the year do you see this blossoming. And the blossom would be the journey of all the fruits that, that begin with flowers. You see, so this happens at the equinox, at the Lamb of God. The beautiful white wool represents the white blossoms in the spring. And then you see uh, the year as it unfurls, summer comes along and ripens the fruit and Virgo is the harvest and then begins the 180 days of winter and so the winter was considered to be infernal or invernal <laughs> same word so invernal would mean winter and infernal is pretty much a derivation of the same root and it is the cold tomb of the winter. And that's why it's called autumn. The autumn ushers in the winter. The infernal, invernal season. And then it closes off the year. Then again, uh, there's another way of looking at cycles. Every cycle begins with, there are four humours, moisture, dryness, hot and cold. And every cycle begins with moisture. Then moisture generates heat. Heat generates dryness. Dryness generates cold. Cold generates moisture. And on and on and on goes the cycle. And you can see this in every cycle, the human lifespan. Uh, if you divide the human life into four different um, sections. The first would be the moisture. We are born very moist as infants, little babies, very moist. Lots of liquids. Then as we become adolescents, the heat, the heat of the passions of the adolescent youth, wanting, desiring, the ambitions, that's the heat so part of the the cycle of life. Then comes uh, dryness. The human organism begins to dry up, the bones dry up, the skin, the flesh becomes dry. You can see wrinkles start, grey hair. This is a sign of not enough oils flowing and blood circulating to carry those oils and the nervous system is drying up, the tree of life. And then as they get older, they get colder. And of course, when you do die, one way to tell whether someone's dead is to feel their, their body, you know. There's no more warm blood. 
it's cold. And you see that cycle again in the daytime. Every morning is moist, there is dew. Every afternoon is warm, the warmest part of the day. Then comes the dry as the sun sets. And then in the night is the very, very cold. And then again, the morning comes, moisture. Same with the year, moist spring, hot summer, dry autumn, cold winter. So astrologically, you are put in a very beautiful uh, advantage when you see cycles acting and reacting in this way. Only do waves do this all the time. They're always moist at the beginning, then they heat up, then they dry up, then they get cold. Your four-stroke engine, your two-stroke engine, anything, it's all the same. The beginning stroke is moisture, where the valve uh, opens and uh, um, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? Uh, as moisture enters into the uh, car, uh, the, the cylinder, then there is a spark, and that's the heat. Then the exhaust valve opens and it dries. Everything is dry. And then before the next uh, intake of uh, gas into the cylinder, everything now is cold and ready for more moisture. And on and on it goes. And so understanding things astrologically gives you the the vantage point of being like the witnesser, I guess. You can witness more as you uh, experience the day. You, you see more. You can see people's astrological signs in the way they talk, in the way they walk, in their behaviour. You see more now because you have more information. You see, there's so much that you can do in a day, so much more when you are astrological. There's more way of intaking information. Uh, and you, you, you don't miss things. There's so much that is missed. People, for instance, they, without the skill of ast astrology, you, you, you don't know how to interact with people as well. Knowing whether they are strong in the mental field, coming from air signs, or the emotional field, coming from water signs, or the sensual practical field, coming from earth signs, or the intuitive mystical field, coming from fire signs. You can uh, interact with these people as you know them astrologically, um, much better if you know how to uh, communicate through the field in which they will be able to absorb what you're saying better. You know, it's no use, for instance, if someone is very intellectual and they have a lot of air in their astrology, they are primarily operating from the material plane so you know your conversation would probably be better for you to have you know um facts and figures uh, knowledge based information rather than just speculating and guesswork and rather than you know uh perhaps bringing in a lot of emotional content you know rather than being uh, super excited and really charged about your information you know perhaps you can be a little bit more cooler and more collected as you deliver your information because people who uh, have a lot of air in their astrology they tend to just want to hear the information just tell them you know don't load it with emotional uh, um, 
positive or negative uh, uh, connotations because it, it, it doesn't register with them. Whereas if you're talking to say someone who's had a lot of water, well, you know, they might need a lot of uh, emotional charge as you deliver the, the facts and figures and information so that they can get into it because they might need to jump into their emotional field as they know well how to and that way now you're connecting with them. You know, I learned this when I was doing uh, home sales. I was a, a new home volume salesman, volume builder. And I used to go to the Tom Hopkins and Anthony, uh, Tony Robbins uh, presentations and seminars when they would go out to Australia and do their teachings. And my company would pay us to go, you know, spend the day to hear these, the world's best salesmen and their techniques. And, and they would teach similar things, but not astrologically, of course, <laughs> because, well, that's not going to favour them because they want to be, you know, the owners of their own teachings. They don't want to show you that it's all astrological in the first place so that, you know, they can't make money out of it. They want to have their own patented, copyrighted little format and way of teaching. So they'll tell you, you know, that you once you know the different types of people, you can tailor to them and you'll get more sales. And I learned how to do this. I learned to find that, you know, men who were sort of more taking the lead when they were coming in to buy a, a house with their wives and families, you know, if they were very cold and analytical and intellectual and had sort of more of a melancholic, phlegmatic personality, well, then you would need to come up with a lot of figures and impress them with what you know, you know, not rather, you know, if they were sort of a sanguine kind of an individual uh, who's very emotionally expressive, you know, then you might just forget about the facts and figures and just sort of promote the house like, oh, look at this beautiful kitchen. Isn't it great the way it makes you feel you know, at home and it's easy to work with, the sink's over here and then the, you know, and the fridge is over there, it's easy to get access to and oh, it just makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. And so as a salesman, you have to be in tune to your customers as they come in, one from another. And you have to adapt yourself, you know, like the Apostle Paul said, be all things to all people, to Jews, be Jews, you know, to Greeks, be Greeks, to Romans, do as the Romans do. And so not to compromise yourself and to, you know, um, you know, not have your standards and just uh, when it comes, but to be able to uh, fit in, to find common ground with people and work on that. And the best way to do it is astrologically. You know, without astrology, you're just so limited. All right, I'll hand it over to someone else. Thank you for that, Santos. Given us lots to think about there. <clears throat> um, Claudio, did that answer for you? <laughs> yep, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, Santos has got a whole lot of knowledge and wisdom that uh, he loves sharing, and uh, we're invigorated to be able to be on the receiving end. Uh, I, I specifically liked your 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 your, your analogy of of all the cycles of life and even putting it to a, a vehicle. I've never heard that one with a vehicle before, so that's uh, something I'll be, uh, I'll be honoring you with uh, repeating that one. Um, and so i just like to say that this s cycle of life is uh, starting over again as, as Eris, Mayat, Metekawaro, Madonna, La Bofana, White Buffalo, Calf Woman, Isis, whatever you want to call her. I like to call her Mama. So mama is an easy one for me, and mama's coming back in our head, and that cycle of life is starting again. We've lost our way. We've gotten cold. Everybody wants to steal from everybody. Everybody wants profit. They put profit before profit, the right profit with the pH. So uh, to me, it's really invigorating that mama's coming into our head, into our plaustrum, and she's going to be doing a cleanup. So... It's uh, it's invigorating. People are going to blossom, and we are already blossoming. Oh, Is thanks, Claudio. Thanks for that, uh, David. Do you want to add anything? 
Yeah, I was towards the end of that. I was thinking about um, relationships and how people base relationships. And Can I just people. say one thing, Santos? When I think that's reverbing through your microphone somehow. Could you just mute when you're not talking? Sounds really rude, doesn't it, to say that to Santos? But anyway, thank you, Santos. Got it, got it. Carry on, David. Yeah, there was some kind of echo, and uh, you are very professional, sister. We know that you don't do it out of a uh, yeah um, power because you've got the power there. But uh, no, it's fixed it. Look, well done. You are very wise, and uh, um, the thread was. I was reflecting upon uh, Santos on about the correlation of the planets and the energies and the the attitude types. I was sat here, brother, grinning. I was thinking, oh, energies, deliverance, passion, emotions. I'm not too proud to say yeah, I'm working on um, certain aspects of my my cup that runneth over with my typical um, Taurus, you know, uh, star sign. So I did reflect there. You actually made me look in on myself and. Uh, I was grinning, but I was uh, <clears throat> I was uh, inside David. Then I was uh, above and in all over. But thank you for that. Um, you do have an eloquent way of of uh, going on walkabout as uh, as Mick did back in the day, um, taking us on walkabout. So the relationships and the correlation of the the planetary alignments. You will all remember reading in the newspapers back in yesteryear. Um, such people as, uh, you know, uh, whatever, Russells and Megs that were writing and telling you your um, astro star charts and so forth. And I have um, darker skinned family members, brothers, sisters, you know, extended that um, look at these charts. Uh, Hinduism, I believe, and certain areas of uh, of the Eastern, um, it's just, it's incredibly accurate. So um, I was also thinking of cyclical consumption on on this realm we have a cycle and, uh, you know, the money cycle and the, the man cycle, our daily cycle, the weekly, the hours, the, there's many cycles going off uh, in amongst themselves, systems in systems. And I just thought the, the way that he was explaining it, the, the energies and so forth, I was just bouncing back to, uh, to that. Uh, he mentioned the Vatican. And so lastly, as we have got um, such men as, you know, ourselves on and with Sister Special K here, do either of you two, uh, are you familiar, uh, Claudio and Santos, with a brother by the name of Mauro, which is M-A-U-R-O, and his family, clan, you know, estate name is Big Lino, B-I-G-L-I-N-O. So that would be Mauro, Big Lino. If you, if you have heard of him, kudos and well done. If you haven't, then there's an earth-shattering 12-month-old uh, video where Mauro has been a, a translator at the Vatican for 10 years and he's been privy to certain, as you mentioned, the, the, the um, apostle and certain bits, uh, names that we've mentioned today. Uh, Mauro's uh, uh, done some studies, uh, correlations, and he's recoded um, certain aspects of, uh, of old writings and certain things that the, the Vatican holds there. And he's come, he's come public and uh, you'll find an interview with Mauro Big Lino and a lady called uh, Sarah Westall, where he's going through, she's questioning him on certain aspects of Adam and Eve and uh, life and correlations and with, with the areas that we're in. I think you'd both be, uh, you, um, you as well, um, sister, um, I don't mean to leave you out, but Santos and Claudio, if you were uh, make a note of uh, Mauro Big Lino and that Sarah Westall and have a look at that hour and 20 minute chat there uh, i think you'll find that that will correlate to your works as well um and your ultimate you know uh, outlook on things but uh, energies it is it's scary santos so i'll just correlate with what i've found and <laughs> to me and uh, to others and when you apply this it is i'm not a master at all but i'm a, I'm a novice but uh, if you get into this and uh, you pay attention uh, what what you get back is uh, you know it's uh, it's very beneficial and it can be used to an advantage um, extremely, you know, it can be in many ways. So if that's picking a wife or a husband and, uh, you know, certain things like that, that's very nice. But if you're using it for, you know, business and so forth, I'm not having a go. I'm just saying it can be, it shows you the applications. And with nature, we often weaponize, don't we? And uh, collateralize, monetize things rather than, and that's why we're in, you know, the state we're in. So thank you, brother. That was truly um, unique and uh, yeah, brilliant to hear. So I yield. Thanks for that, David. Um, yeah, everybody's agreeing. It's really nice, isn't it? Um, 
we've been going for just over two hours. Is there anything anybody else would like to add in information in this hangout? Or do you think that we've covered quite a big area here? And obviously, hopefully, made people well, think. Well, guys, uh, at the most, I can only be around for another 10 minutes. Uh, but I'd like to hear from Claudio before we go. Um, it's pretty much his um, show today, too, as well. So how about we just close off with, or at least hear from Claudio before I go? I'd love that. Thank you. Okay, if we do that, but it's nice to say goodbye, you know, together. So we'll finish the hangout and say goodbye when we're not recording it. But carry on, Claudio. Yeah, um, it's, this has been a very, very invigorating and uh, it's nice to meet with amazing people. And Santos, you, uh, I mean, you're, you're a legend in many people's eyes uh, for all the work you've done. Um, it's... Uh, I, I, every time I watch any of your stuff, I, uh, your beautiful synchronism, and even today I learned and made a lot of notes, and I know I'll be going further with more and more studies. It's, it's, it's invigorating. It's, it's awesome to see people come together with the same cause, and it's going to be fantastic to see what the future lies for us. And I know you're in Aries, and it's just going to be exciting to see how everybody gets lit up with this uh, beautiful luminary coming into our into our top chakra. So uh, I did make a note, brother David, on uh, on Big Lino there. I haven't heard of him, and uh, I I've already got the video ready to play. So I'm I'm very 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 excited to have had this moment to spend with everybody and with Santos here. I uh, really appreciate it. If Santos has any words and anything he'd like me to look up or do, because, hey, this is my life now. It's uh, the alignments, the epiphanies, the guidance, the animal guidance that I'm getting, spiritual clouds, luminaries, people. Uh, where, whenever, when anybody speaks, there's always a message in there, whether you know them or not, whether you like them or not. There's always something. There's always a hidden message. And when you're in tune with that, it's just you're, you're, you're getting an amazing guidance. And I think that's what's happening with Mama coming into our close to our claustrum and starting to peek inside. It's, uh, it's, it's really amazing. So uh, with that, uh, I will do my, uh, my sayonaras. I'm, I mean, I know I'm going to still hang out here, but uh, uh, I'll finish with that. And I thank everybody for their time. Oh, thanks, Claudio. David? Do you want to say anything else? Um, no, we, we have uh, covered a lot of extensive areas and uh, it has been um, a privilege and an honour to be with such a nobleman and scholars, yourself included, sister. So it's great to see the energy um, brother B's got there and what's going off. And uh, I'm having trouble keeping up with you, Santos. Well done, kudos uh, with, uh, with many things. And... Uh, you're keeping us on our toes and uh, um yes i am um, i'm happy to see um you know the current codings and yeah codes and cycles and energies coming back around and uh, it looks like we're getting a, a large dose of truth science and uh, prosperity in many ways so um yeah i uh, i concur with what brother um claudio just said there and um it's, it's been it's been excellent um it's flown by again very fast and i know your time's important so we're very grateful and uh have told me to say hello thank you lots of love and uh, continue the good work i yield thanks david thanks for that well thanks for the uh, comment as well but i can't um i can't say what you three can say <laughs> i'm just here to help you talk um santos is there anything you want to add santos? uh no no, not really. Thank you, Claudio. Appreciate your share. Please uh, continue and let me uh, be updated on anything else you come up with. I'll um, go to your YouTube channel and um, have a look at the other vids. What's the name of it again? Uh, it's just my name, brother, Claudio Salvaggi, and of course, Ayutami, which is an Italian yep. mean help me, right? Ayutami? Yes, exactly. Wow. 
Well, in a sense, Claudio could send it to me and I can send it to you. Right. And um, yeah, and then you can, yeah, well, or talking anyway, but um, it's been a really, really great hangout. Thank you so much for all your time and effort, all of you. It's really great. I hope people um, are thinking more now. And um, the being in touch bit, I think, is one of the most important parts. But Santos, uh, Claudio and David, thank you so much. Oh, sorry, Santos has gone. I just accidentally cut the recorder off right at the end. <laughs> um, Santos has just gone, by the way. Um, I was hoping to say goodbye to him, you know, I'm um, not recording. But anyway, sorry. Bye, everybody. Um, we're going now. Thanks very much for listening.